Welcome to this SEPNET video lecture on virtual observatory tools for astronomers. My name is Justin. Today we're going to cover how to use the CDS services Simbad, Vizier, Aladdin, and a graphical table viewer Topcat. Whilst each of these VO tools are extremely useful individually, they work best when used together, as you'll see in this video. The examples I show today should provide an astronomy researcher a great foundation to start utilising these tools full potential to aid their research. The video description contains links to download Aladdin and Topcat free of charge and web links to Simbad and Vizier. There are also web links to each of the example catalogues used in this video and references to the tutorials hosted on the VO website. We're going to start with a quick overview of the CDS portal to find out how to gather information about various astronomical objects. The CDS portal includes the services Simbad, the astronomical database, which includes over 8 million objects, and Vizier, the catalogue service, which hosts over 15,000 catalogues. Once navigating to the Simbad database website, the simplest search to do is a basic search, for example, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, this displays all of the measured information about the galaxy. You have a summary here, including its coordinates, its identifiers, its fluxes in various wavelengths. You have an interactive Aladdin light view over here. So this is the web version of the browser that we'll be using later on in the session. As you scroll down, you get more information about the object, its other identifiers, its associations. You can view plots of the measurements. You can search for references. For example, looking at the uh, references from the last year or so, you can see quite a lot of papers that have looked at M51 over the last year. You can also have a look at the measurements, so if we look at the distance, you see the measured distance here with a reference to the paper that gave that measurement. So searching on Simbad is very simple, as I said, either object identifier or coordinates you can search for around a given coordinate by a given radius and get all the information about the object that you're looking for in particular. Now if it's a lot of objects that you're looking at you're more than likely going to want to search for a catalogue. So Vizier is the place to go to do that. This is the Vizier homepage. You can search by an author name, uh, object type, keywords, or over here you can search by wavelength, mission, or the type of object that you're interested in. If we already know the author we want to look at, for example, we want to find the star cluster catalogue by Karchenko, we have a look through here, we see. So this is the catalogue that we're searching for, the Milky Way Global Survey of Star Clusters. Uh, we see this one in particular has been obsoleted by this particular catalogue which is listed further down the page here. So if we just click on this catalogue, we see this shows the list of tables that the catalogue contains. We want the catalogue itself, so click on this link, and okay, so this shows all of the measurements that are given in this catalogue, with default ones selected. If we just click submit, we will get a overview of the catalogue with the measurements selected, listed. We can see that we can click on one of the links and go straight back to Simbad to get information about the open cluster that was listed in the catalog there. There are multiple ways to download the entire catalog. If for example you want all the columns, you select here. You can select the output, whether you want a tab separated or comma saturated variable file. You can also download a VO table or a FITS file. You can also send it straight over to the CDS portal service. So this is all contained within the CDS website. If you send all of the columns over there, uh, we won't add a comment for now. And we'll go to my data and have a look. So you can actually log in and have your own account on the CDS. This is all free. You can see here are some of the catalogs I saved earlier. Uh, with the number of rows, the size, and you then also have the option to download them. You also have further actions such as broadcasting the table 
straight to Aladdin or Top Cat, which we're going to look at later in the video. This section of the video is a quick overview of Aladdin. I'm going to highlight the most useful features to get you started with how to use it. So this is the view after starting up Aladdin. You can load in an all sky survey by clicking on one of the links at the top. For example, the digitized sky survey is loaded here. You can zoom with the mouse wheel and use left click to pan the view. You notice that the coordinates are listed in the location in the toolbar in the frame of ICRS. You can either type coordinates to go to a specific location or you can type the object identifier. Let's have a look at M42 in Orion. If we zoom in, we see the nebula there. You can use the right mouse button to adjust the contrast of the image. If we pan over to the galactic plane, you can then change the frame to galactic coordinates so you can scroll across the galactic plane to the galactic center. Click here to open the server selector window. This allows you to search for images on the left or catalogs on the right. The default view is the hierarchical progressive surveys, which is just like what we clicked on at the top to load in a whole sky survey. If we want to look for a specific image, we can go to Aladdin images. We'll type in M51, submit, and have another look at the Whirlpool Galaxy. This list shows the available images that can be loaded in. If we have a look at one of the DSS images, you just have to select it and submit. We'll download the JPEG. It then appears as what's known as a plane. So we can select the DSS color image or the DSS single channel image. And again, you can adjust the contrast and zoom in and out. Some of the quick tools you can use are located on the right here. For example, a distance tool. You can look at the rough size of the galaxy. So it's approximately four or five arc minutes across. That also now appears as a drawing plane on the right, which you can again switch on or off by clicking here. Another quick tool to use is the contour map. If we generate a default contour, that is also loaded in as a plane on the right. And you can see that this highlights the features of the galaxy nicely. You can manually adjust the levels of the contours and the number of levels you want to generate. This then loads into a new plane on the right. You can deselect one and you can also change the opacity with the slider here. We could also quickly query the Simbad database to overplot all of the galaxy positions. If we look at M51 and reduce that radius to about 30 arc minutes, change the filter to galaxy, hit submit. This has then loaded in all of the objects that have the type galaxy or similar. If we click on one of the objects, you can see a summary of the information listed in Simbad and clicking on this link will take you to the Simbad website. And note here that the left click has now changed to a select tool. So we can click and drag to highlight any of the objects that are shown in the window and get a summary of the information here. If there was further information that would also appear in the table here. Again, you can deselect the Simbad catalog by clicking there to return to just the image. So this is a single wavelength image. What might be useful is to apply a pixel map to the image to better highlight the features. We'll have a look at the fire map. And now when you zoom, you can see that the intensity corresponds to different colors, depending on how you change the contrast. And this works very well with the contour maps that we generated earlier to highlight areas of constant pixel values. What you can also generate is a false color image from three wavelength channels. So if we return to our server select window, go back to Aladdin images. If we select just the two mass images in the three filters and hit submit, 
They are then loaded into our plain view on the right here. So we can select each one and adjust the contrast individually. Just to highlight the features of the galaxy. You can then click on the RGB tool to generate a false color image of these three wavelength channels. We see that the H, J and K have been put into red, green and blue. If we click create, we then have our false color infrared image of the galaxy. And what we might want to do is compare that to the true color image. You can click on the multi view window here and then select in the right hand plane, load in the DSS color image. Then if we return to the left image and click match, it will then match up the images and if you scroll around or pan in one, so I can use the middle mouse button to pan, it then keeps it aligned and matched. Another way of seeing everything that's available around your target area is to have a look at the All VO tab in the server selector. If we query M51 around 9 arc minutes, hit submit. This is going to tell us everything that's available from all of the repositories listed within the virtual observatory servers. It will show us images, catalogues and spectra. So this may take quite a while to query all of the servers. Once you've found the one that you're looking for, you can hit stop. And you can load in, for example, all of the Gaia data catalog or another single channel image. So here is an image from the Subaru cam and the red highlight shows you what area of your current plane that covers. So there are many more ways and options to load in images to Aladdin, but as you can see it is very simple by either entering coordinates or an identifier. The best way is to just have a play around with the software, try searching for different objects or coordinates at different sizes from any of the servers that are listed here and you'll see that it's very easy to get the images that you're after. Next we're going to have a look at how Aladdin handles surveys and catalogues and how you can overplot the data onto your images. If we right click on one of the planes we can delete all of them before carrying on to the next section. We're now going to have a look at comparing the coverage of sky surveys and finding out whether or not objects within a catalogue are contained within those surveys. Again, we'll start by loading the DSS All Sky image. And in our other plane, we're going to load from the HIP server the infrared Herschel survey. We'll load the color survey into another plane. We have that matched. Let's turn on the coordinate grid and ensure that that is matched. There we go. So we now have our two surveys loaded and we can note that the Herschel survey is not all sky. You can see that by the patches that aren't covered here. What we want to do is load up the multi-order coverage of the current survey and we can see that that's loaded into both frames. If we click in the DSS image and load up the coverage of that survey as well. We can see that they're both stacked as new planes in our list on the right here. Now what we can do is compute a logical operation of the two surveys. So we want the DSS color and the packed color and we want the logical intersection of those surveys. If we hit create we can then turn off the original surveys and we're left with just the intersection. We're now going to find out whether objects in the catalog are within this survey coverage. And to do this, we're going to load in the catalog that we found in the last section of the video, which is the Karchenko All Sky catalog. And if you didn't see that part of the video, the link is provided in the video description. So if we go back over to the web browser and my data on the CDF portal, this top catalog is the Galactic Star Clusters. And if we click the broadcast link here, it says that the table has been broadcasted over to the available platforms. You may have to accept a pop-up. We see now that that catalogue has been loaded into the, both of the images. 
we can select a number of the sources and we see that we have a much more comprehensive list of object details included in our table at the bottom here. Now what we want to do is find all of the sources that are within our survey coverage and to do that we go back to coverage and select filter a table by MOC. The MOC plane that we want to use is the intersection of the DSS and the PACS and the catalog plane is our Vizier catalog there. If we hit create, unselect the original survey, we're now left with just the ones within the survey coverage. And what we can do is right click on the catalog and select properties. We can change the color of the dot so it stands out better against the color of the coverage map. We could then reduce the opacity of the coverage map again to better highlight our objects on the sky. We've already seen how to load a custom catalog from Simbad and we sent one straight over to Aladdin from the CDS portal. We're now going to load one straight from the Vizier server by searching in the Aladdin server selector. If we type WiseH2 into the free text and hit submit, we can load here the WISE catalogue of Galactic H2 regions that compiles all of the Milky Way H2 regions. The tables listed here, we have the WISE catalogue itself and then some supplementary tables to go with it. We can rename the source catalogue from its properties so we know which one it is we want to be looking at. We can also load in the WISE All Sky imagery to support this catalogue and to have a look at the regions themselves. So if we pan around and zoom in and have a look at a couple of them. And if we adjust the contrast a little and maybe change the colour of those dots. There we go. Change it to a larger circle so we can see them easier. There we go. Now if we choose another multi-view and load in another All Sky survey, let's click on the Spitzer survey. So this is another infrared survey. We we'll load that into the bottom window and match it to the first one. And let's find a region of the survey that is covered by the Spitzer survey. Here we go, this section looks good. So the other catalogue that we're going to load in is the Milky Way Project Bubble Catalogue, which was a citizen science project that looked at identifying all of these infrared bubbles that you can see from the Spitzer image. To do that, we can load it straight in through Vizier, so another way of loading in the catalogue data. If we go to Vizier and search for Milky Way Project, catalogue that we're interested in is the large bubble catalogue. If we select that and we want all of the rows and submit, this shows the catalogue in HTML format and we can click on the broadcast up here to send it straight over to Aladdin and we'll just accept that pop-up. So we now have the bubbles listed in Aladdin as well and let's go ahead and rename that catalogue to Milky Way Project Bubbles. So not all of these bubbles will be due to H2 regions. Some of them will be due to stellar winds from late B-type stars. What we're going to do is cross-match the Milky Way Project bubble catalogue with the WISE H2 region catalogue to find all of the coincident occurrences. To do that, we click Catalogue, Cross-match Objects, and we want the bubbles in the H2 regions, and we'll have a threshold of 30 arc seconds and the best matches. If we perform that cross match and then turn off the original catalogues, we're now left with just the positions that are both bubble and H2 regions. So taking a look at some of these objects, we can see that our table list now concatenates both of the catalogues. So we have all of the information from the Milky Way project bubble list and then all of the information from the wires table as well. So 
This can be performed for any two catalogues that you have because all of the catalogues will have the position information. More information about the selected catalogue can be shown by the small histogram that you have in the bottom right here. By selecting one of the table columns, for example the effective radius, shows you a histogram of the distribution. You can then highlight just the small bubbles by clicking on the histogram and that will highlight your regions there. So I hope that these examples have shown you how easy Aladdin is to use and that it's a great VO tool for visualising data from catalogues and sky surveys. Next we're going to move on to TopCat to look at how we can utilise the catalogue data further. TopCat is an interactive table viewer for astronomical datasets. It allows for graphical representation of the table data, cross-matching, creation of subsets, statistical calculations, and we can broadcast any of the data straight back to Aladdin to have a look at it. To get started, we're going to perform the same match that we did in Aladdin with the Wise H2 catalogue and the Milky Way project bubble list. We'll use the first catalogue we load in to take a look at some of the example features of TopCat. Like in Aladdin, there are many different ways to load in catalogue to TopCat. The first one we're going to look at is directly querying the Vizier service. So by clicking here, we can search for all rows of a catalogue by a keyword in this case, and we'll search for Wise H2. And here we have the Wise catalogue of Galactic H2 regions, the same one that we loaded into Aladdin. If we hit OK, their server gets queried and those catalogues get loaded in. So now would be a good time to have a look at those other tables that were loaded in with the Wise catalogue to see what they were. Double clicking on a catalogue opens it up so you can view the data and the columns. You can also click on this button here to display that cell data. The metadata is displayed by clicking on this toolbar button. This shows a description of the catalogue. So if we have a look at table 3 to see what that is, we note here that this is the sources that weren't included in the main catalogue. And if we look at this table, we see that this is the references. So there are only 78 rows in this compared to the 8,000 in this one. It shows that for some of the objects in the catalogues, a reference is provided with an author and paper. And clicking on this toolbar button, gives you a summary of the table columns. So their name, their ID, their class and their units with a description. So it's the units that are hard coded into the table that allows TopCat to perform some of its calculations. So now might be a good time to make a quick join of the catalogue and the references so that we can quickly access which one's which. To do that we'll click on join and pair match. In this case we're going to use an exact value where table 1 is the catalogue, table 2 is the references, and we're going to join by that reference column. So if we click go, we know that it's only found 13 pairs. Because we selected best match symmetric, it's taken only one of each reference number. So that's not what we want. Instead we go back to our output rows and we select all matches and what we're going to do is take all of the table, uh, all of the columns, sorry, from table one. And if we click go now, we note that it's found 1,500 pairs, but there is still the 8,400 rows. So we have all of the data, and then some of the data has its reference listed now in this one table. So what we could do is rename that table to the H2 regions with references. So the sigma butter on the toolbar shows row statistics. This gives you a mean and standard deviation as well as minimum and maximum values for the numerical columns. The next button are graphical viewers. The first one is set up for a histogram. If we click that, we can take, for example, the radius of the bubbles. We can see that most of them are quite small compared to the few that are large. If we have a look at the distance, we can see how that's distributed uh, almost normally. We have a sky position plot in viewer here. So this will display the positions of all of the objects in 3D using the ICRS data. The other buttons are for customizable plane and 3D plotting. 
either with uh, Cartesian or spherical coordinates. So back to our original idea of matching up these catalogues, we note that we still have the Milky Way project data open in Vizier. So again, we can just click broadcast and send that straight over to TopGap. So we now want to match these two catalogues. Uh, we have a toolbar button for the match tables here, and we're now going to match by positions. And seeing as these objects are actually diffuse objects, we can match them entirely by their ellipses. So we could have done this in Aladdin as well. We're going to leave the scale at one arc second this time because we're going to find the actual crossovers of these regions. So we'll select the bubble catalog there and the regions, the H2 regions here. We've got the RA and deck column automatically selected. For the primary and secondary radius column, we have those columns listed in the catalog. And since they're diameter, we can divide both of them by two. And note how the units automatically change based off that table metadata. Now for the H2 regions, we're only given a radius. So we put that in the primary, and then we can put zero in the secondary and the position angle columns. So this also works if you have one diffuse set of objects and one set of point sources. You can put zero in all of the second catalog just to find out whether those positions are within the diffuse radii. If we leave it now as best match symmetric and join one and two, click go, that will compute the match of those two columns. And we see that we have just under 2,200 pairs found. And if we open up that table to have a look at it, we see that we have all of the Milky Way project information first, followed then by all of the wise data second. What we may want to do now is create a user-defined subset of those columns. If we have a look at the subset toolbar here, we can click to add one. If we go back to the table column information and we have a look down at the wise catalog information, we see that it has a column CL, which is a character class and it's the classification of the H2 region. And if we have a look at the column itself, we see that that could be K for known or C for candidate, uh, G for group, and we just want to select all of the known ones. So just remembering what number that was. So that is ID 24. So going back to our subset name, we we'll call it known and we'll have $24 equals K. So we have the logical equal sign there. And we note that that subset is 32% of the entire table. And if we return to our histogram, we can now have another look at the effective radius and if we have a look at the subsets and turn on the known ones we can see that known H2 regions are have this distribution in comparison to the ideal data set and you can also scroll in and out on the axis bars to change the number of bins or on the data itself to scroll in and out this button here recenters the data so as you can see, it's very easy to join catalogues together in TopCat and to get some summary statistics about them. I didn't know about this when I started my PhD. I put all my catalogues into a Python script and mapped them that way. And although that worked, this is much quicker and easier. Now let's have a look at finding a cluster using the graphs in TopCat and then broadcasting the results straight over to Aladdin. This time, instead of downloading a whole catalog, we're gonna use the cone search service to find a small area around a given target. In this case, we're gonna look for the Pleiades. When you click resolve, it gives you the positions there, and we're gonna look for five degrees around the target. To pick which catalog we're gonna search from, we're gonna type in Gaia as the keyword, and we're then going to look at the TGAS cone search service. So we have our parameters set and our catalog selected. If we hit OK. That is then loaded straight into TopCat. If we have a look at the sky plot, we see that this is our five degree cone, that part of the sky. What we're going to do now is view these objects in proper motion space. So we'll open up our plane plot window, and for X, we're going to select. PMRA and for Y, PM deck. 
and by zooming into this section up here we note that there's an over density of objects with similar proper motion we're going to create a subset around that and we can do that graphically by clicking here and then dragging around the area that we're interested in and hitting that button again we can then add this subset with so we call that co-moving co -moving. and now what we're going to want to do is refine that subset based upon the object's parallax so if we go to histogram and select parallax as the x and subset we're going to look at co-moving and not the rest so we can resize the window here so we see we have a couple of outliers what we're going to do now is define another subset which will be the cluster and the expression will be taken from the co-moving subset and we want the parallax to be less than 10 and the parallax to be greater than 5 hit OK and notice how the histogram has automatically added that subset there so now we've identified the cluster we can have a double check by going back to our 3D plot and looking at longitude RA and latitude deck and then for our radius we'll select 1000 divided by the object's parallax and note that this is all of the data we're only interested in the cluster subset so if we click there and center that we see that we've identified the cluster if we now turn the rest of them back on we can see that that is in amongst the 5 arc second sorry 5 degree cone that we searched for originally we can also add the proper motion to the sky plot as arrow vectors to do this we click on form add an arrow vector there in fact let's detach this so we can see it better so we have our sky vector delta longitude PMRA, delta latitude, PM deck, and if we add the subset back in, we note now that all of our objects in the cluster, the proper motion arrows point in the same direction. So now let's have a look at broadcasting this data over to Aladdin to have a look at it on a real image. So we have Aladdin open here we're going to load up the DSS all sky image and then if we return to TopCat and we click broadcast what's going to happen is it sends that table straight over to Aladdin and we can pan around and have a look at the cluster though we note here that we have actually sent over all of the data not just the cluster so what we need to do now is select the subset here just the cluster and hit broadcast again and now we send over another plane that is just the cluster so by deselecting that we see that these are just the objects that are attributed to this co-moving cluster and you can see that it's not just the bright young ones in the middle it is actually a lot bigger than it first appears another thing you can do with TopCat is read in your own CSV files as a table so if you have your own user constructed data, list of targets for example, and you want to cross match those to publish catalogues, you can do that very easily in TopCat. You can then push it straight to Aladdin to have a look at it on the all sky picture. The final example I'm going to go through with TopCat is a more advanced use using the table access protocol query. By clicking VO and tap Query, we can use SQL-like language to query databases. So don't worry if you don't know SQL or SQL. I'm not going to go into that much in this video. I'm just going to show you some quick examples and how most of these tap servers have their own example queries that you can get data very quickly from. So if we have a look at, again, Gaia, find service, and look for the ARA Gaia service. This fetches all of the schema for the database. 
and as I said I'm not going to go much into SQL but a very ex quick example query is just to select the top 10 from the TGAS table which is this one here. If we run that query we then generate a table in TopCat that is just the top 10 sources from that table. So this can be very useful if you have very big tables to look through and you have a very specific search and you only want to download a section of the data. The great thing about the tap query though is that most of the servers have example scripts that you can run that are very comprehensive and powerful. So if we have a look here for example at the service provided color and magnitude from the DR1 data list. We see what we've queried here is the table and we've taken absolute magnitudes in the G filter and the B minus V color index. So if we now go to a plain plot and we're going to want to plot the B minus V color index against the absolute GMAG from Gaia. So this plot might look familiar and if we flip the Y axis you can see that we now have a color magnitude diagram or HR diagram of the Gaia data. If we go back to the data there, go to form, we can add in a density shader. Let's detach this again so we can see it easier. So we have our density shader, we can pick one of these, let's go for plasma. Shade. You could also overplot contours onto this. Uh, let's change the colour so we can actually see it though. And you could change the levels and the smoothing like you could in Aladdin. That concludes this video lecture on VO tools for astronomers. The links in the video description provide further information for even more uses of Aladdin and TopCat, as well as the written tutorials that some of these examples were adapted from. There is also an index with links to rewatch any of the sections. I'd like to thank the CDS, Asterix 2020, and everyone involved with the second VO School 2016. I had a great time learning about these packages there, and I hope that I put that across in this video. I'd also like to thank SETNET and the University of Kent for giving me the opportunity to make this video. I hope that this lecture was helpful for you as you continue your astronomy research, and thank you for watching.